First of all, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for attending. Can I just start by asking you if you can turn off your mobile phones, we'll put them on silence please, for the duration of our meeting. This meeting is being webcast, so everyone is aware that there is still in taking place and it is being webcast. A reminder again about the microphones, if your microphone is switched on, the camera will stay on you with someone else's microphone. It doesn't work to this full efficiency. So when you finish with your microphones, you can turn your microphones off. Can I also say that David Armstrong has been taken ill, and I'm sure it will be the committee's wishes that we wish him all the best for a speedy recovery. Thank you. Now, can I just conclude my opening comments by saying this is a meeting held in public. Not a public meeting. Can I go on to write on one of the agenda <coughs> by asking members if there are any declarations of interest for the party whip? No? Thank you. Before I go on to item two, can I just say that? There were, there was a request for additional witnesses. Uh, I decided that those witnesses were not relevant to this calling. So, on behalf of this committee, I made the decision one being the next employee and one being the chief executive officer. So, I questioned the relevance and after the advice, I was told those witnesses. So moving on to item two, the call in business, the local plan. The procedure is as follows. Lead signatory will have up to five minutes to explain the nature of the call in, followed by any questions from members of the committee. The cabinet member will have up to five minutes to explain the reasons for the decision, followed by questions from members of the committee. Calling witnesses will be invited to come forward and may make a statement which will not exceed five minutes. The witnesses for this calling are Paul Sator, Director of Business Management, thank you for attending the call, David Ball, Assistant Director, Major Growth Projects and Housing Delivery, Members will be invited to ask questions of the witnesses. The lead signatory will then summarise the key points of evidence given in support of their case. The cabinet member will summarise the key points of evidence given in support of the initial decision. Members will then be invited to make comments and observations from what has been presented. The committee may then take various courses of action. Refer the decision back to the cabinet member. Setting out in writing the nature of its concerns, refer the matter to council or uphold the decision. Is everyone happy and understands the calling process? Yeah. Okay, can I start by inviting Councillor Blakely to give the reasons for the calling and uh, remember that you have five minutes. Councillor Blakely.
Secondly, Brian Bailey, because, and I quote, because he's a former employee, and that you feel there's no other value in his presence, in that any additional input would not be relevant to the call and would be retrospective. And what do you base those assumptions? I'm not asking you to answer, Chair, because I don't know. No, I will answer, Councillor Blakely. As long as you have had an email by way of correspondence explaining the thought processes behind that situation, and I stand by that decision. I remain disappointed. Uh, anyway, we are where we are. Committing the waving outline in the corner is pretty self explanatory. However, I'll try to expand on each of the reasons. Cabinet agreed to give greater powers to the delegation to call the Director for Economic and Housing Growth. However, making that decision, the Cabinet were aware that no one was in post. Uh, we were informed that here the Council had party company, no other reason was given. And he left immediately. I understand the scores at the door and see what the premises were not the senior officer of the council. So just who were these powers delegated to? As this is our, and I say our elected members, this is our local plan. I don't believe it unreasonable to be told who we are expected to place our trust in. Yet to this day, that information has not been forthcoming. What we do know is since then, the Chief Executive, without any recourse to employment appointments, decided to appoint a consultant or the contract of the Council, albeit as an interim, to run the Corporate Director of the Economic Council Group, who was then removed from that role within a couple of days because of financial irregularities with that individual's company. Not the good call the Chief Executive, I would say, that he's not here to answer for himself, so perhaps Mr. Sattel can speak on his behalf. Uh, let's not forget, if that had been allowed, we would have somebody employed as interim chair, interim of housing corporate, who is being investigated to now understand by HMRC. <coughs> who is responsible for our local plan? Well, again, I said we don't know. Uh, there was another incident associated with the Willow Road Company, so was he also by default influence in the local plan, but his contract was ended at the end of January. So we are among the wiser to who is picking up these delegated powers. And without this calling, we would have, decisions would have been made affecting our roles as councillors for years to come. There's no doubt about that. Somebody somewhere, unknown to us, would have been making these decisions. The second reason we call it is because I've already burst the pain of the council above. And, and personally, I am losing faith in council officers and council getting this right. The council has delayed for 14 years, and now they simply seem to want to railroad this local plan through. As I said before, this is our plan. It's an elected member's plan. We are, we are the ones who should be keeping a close eye on this and on, on what is being done in our name. We need to make the decisions on every single part of the Clutch Local Plan. And that means more scrutiny committee meetings and no more council meetings, and so be it. It is our name that's going to be on the ballot paper and the ballot box, not officers. We will answer for this local plan. Therefore, we shall be the decision makers at all stages. We know from a meeting we had this council, uh, this committee in December, when we questioned uh, Mr. Elkington. He couldn't talk about why Bradford will go for a problem. Of course, was not linked with our part of the Wallens. We were simply told to take up a David Ball. David, behind me, the same officer carried out the consultation with local plan. That would indicate to me that somewhere along the line, uh, the Bradford Ward is involved within the local plan, and it will be built on. I'll have to rush through this because the five minutes really is not time. So the final reason we call in relation to the to consultants, it's, it's buried in the report of section 7.4, and it says external consultants will be appointed to undertake the sustainability appraisal and strategic environmental assessments. Yet there is nothing listed in either cabinet recommendation or the section report relation to financial implications. I wonder how many of you were that this council is paying the barrister a jaw dropping £600 per hour. It's six hundred pounds per hour. And to anticipate the cost of this balance still in the region of 135,000 take local plan, 
simply to <coughs> the mission. Okay, time counts for lately. Can I have 30 seconds to finish, please? You can, yes. sir. You can. Of course. Thank you. In closing, Chair <coughs> Members, as you have picked up by now, we have a council who has delayed producing a local plan for 14 years, who now appear to want to play catch up by delegating to council officers, allowing them to take control of our local plan, and it would appear at any cost. I believe, as elected members, we really do have a responsibility to each and every one of our constituents to protect our green belts, our playing fields, and our green and open spaces. And we can only fulfil that responsibility by ensuring we keep a close eye on the social local plan. And I hope you join with me in having this matter referred back to Council so that all elected members can debate this. This is an important issue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Layton. Before I ask members if there are any questions, can I just, and undoubtedly it won't be the first time this evening, can I refer members to the two points that actually relate specifically to the call in? Can I ask that you couch your questions around those two points and not make statements based on spurious information, but actually deal with the two specific points that relate exclusively to the calling. Can I invite any members if there are any questions for Councillor Blakey? No? Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, Brian, I didn't see you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Through you, I'd like to ask Councillor Blakey because you made a statement that you said we should be the decision makers. And I assume when you meant, said me, you meant the elected council. You said we, not me. Yeah, but we. Yeah. So are you saying that? Council officers are actually making decisions on the local plan. No, no, Chair. What I'm saying is, Council cabinets have delegated or want to delegate through their decision to Council officers the right to make more decisions without reference to councillors, either scrutiny committees or at Council. It is delegating extra powers to Council officers. Developed, which will meet our residents' 
housing needs. Every member will demand full political oversight of that local plan. We agree on all of these points, that is exactly what we are planning to deliver. There is no attempt to reduce, to, to reduce member oversight. There is no attempt to allow officers to approve our local plan. David Ball will talk to you later. David has attended this committee every time it has met to share the progress of a local plan. He's answered your questions. He's provided information. He's done everything you have asked him to, of, of to do, and he will continue to. We are looking to establish a cross-party group of members to review and delve into the detail of technical studies. We will involve members in this process every step of the way. The decision I made, I made at Cabinet, was about speed and efficiency. Technical studies, factual in nature, form the basis of our local plan evidence base. Those studies about flooding, infrastructure and the like are completed by experts and treated as fact. We simply want to review those studies and insert them into our evidence base, which is then part of the local plan approved by this council. You will see them all. You will all know we are at risk of government intervention in our local plan. No one around this table, I believe, wants that to happen. If we do not move quickly, it will happen. Government ministers and white hall civil servants will be... One minute, uh, councillor Davis. Thank you. A lot less sympathetic to Will's local needs and our precious clean belt than the members of this council. We need to retain control of this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Do we have any questions for Councillor Davis?
sorry, to date this has been an officer-led process in the offices of the council and consultants, some of whom have been referred to by Councillor Blakeman, others we are not aware of but have been involved in the process. You yourself have said that you are not satisfied with the progress to date on the local plan. And yet what this decision is saying is that we will continue to give officers primary responsibility for developing that local plan, even though for the last 14 years, by your own admission, you are not satisfied with the progress they have made. So I think my, my follow-up question, Chair, on that is if we look at the specific officers involved in this, can you tell us, Cabinet Member, how often did you meet with the likes of Brian Daly and how often did you meet with Stuart Halliday, specifically on the issue of the local plan? I met with Brian Bailey uh, when he was here uh, on a monthly period uh, and also uh, from a housing point of view on a two week period. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you very much, Councillor. There was Councillor Adam Sykes. Well, I'm 
which is the brown belt, brown field, sorry, brown belt, uh, brown, brown field, uh, and the, we, we have got, or well, the officers have got back them letters, and they're working with them to see if that can be, uh, as you yourself, Joe, have put one, one point for uh, which could be, uh, I'm not saying it's going to be, it could be, and that's where we're at with every single site at the present moment in time. That's why there's nothing to be put back at this moment in time. Because it's in the time scale that we're looking for at this present moment in time. Yeah. So is, is that kind of information that we'll like in writing or is it just a list of the sites that are being considered for housing and list of ground for the commercial sites that are not being considered for housing? Okay. Fine. Mr. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Councillor Davis. Um, I'll just go back to the point that you made earlier um, regarding um, you did, you're, you're not in favour of building on, on Greenbelt, mm -hmm. and neither is anybody else in this room, I don't think. Um, but when we, well, when we, we look through the cabinet, uh, minutes from, from the meeting that we're discussing now recording, there were several cabinet members who um, expressed um, opinion regarding the government and the government's uh, refusal to accept the OMS figures at this time and is instead um, offering for the larger number. Um, the question to you is if we did the the Women Authority would have been a little bit more concise with bill holdings over a number of years and then went down to a contract, a signed contract, to <coughs> knew exactly how many properties, residential properties, they were signing up to. What we, we, we could have taken them to the government, surely um, the government might have been a little bit um, um, uh, persuaded to accept the, the lower figure, the ONS figure. Um, I, I feel that um, you know we haven't explored the possibilities that we have. So I'd just like your opinion on that, please. Um, I accept what you're saying about the holdings. Uh, I, I can't say too much at the present moment in time, but I had a meeting with some of the peer holding people last week, uh, and I got a better response than what I was thinking of before. So I will report back on that. Thank you, Councillor Dave Mitchell. And thank you, Chair. Uh, comments and questions you always got to make. Exactly. The first, first one is in relation to the uh, total plan, which we all receive on a regular basis. Yeah. And over the 14 years leeway, it's been recorded quite a few times that this needed to be looked at. Yeah. And it's something that needs to be. But the main thing that comes uh, to me, and most of the members, is uh, though you've delegated most uh, efficient to the officers. It's the backbenchers who are really worried because, as Chris Blakey said in his uh, OK yes. statement, yes. we are the ones that will be carrying the awesome. can. And yes. someone in the outer regions of the, the, the borough who is surrounded by the green belt, great egg agricultural land, I'm really concerned of the proposals that have been put forward by what could happen if the development plans don't put in place. Uh, I've been now long enough chair to actually on the original plan, the last yeah. development plan that took place and we went through the whole thing. <coughs> this is something that should have been looked at a lot more in depth sooner. I know we've updated it on two occasions in the last 14 years, yeah. but it's never been uh, an in-depth piece of work that's required. You look at all the things that come from central government in relation to national policy frameworks, or, or lots of the issues that we're concerned about connectivity right away. What we need is the figures, the up to date figures, to prove to government that we don't need to break into the green belt. Right. And I think we need that to come from you and the officers. Yeah. And I support that, Dave. Thank you, Councillor Mitchell. Councillor Rennie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. I mean, my question is, is just very basic and very simple, really, um, to the Cabinet member for housing. Can, can you tell us, I mean, it's been mentioned already here um, in open forum, um, Brackenwood Golf Course. Could you just tell me what you know um, about the future of Brackenwood Golf Course in plain, simple language that the residents could understand? Um, yeah, well, it, it's, 
difficult in terms of, 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 of the local plan. Uh, local plan is, is part and parcel of, uh, I'm absolutely certain, Christine and himself, the, the, the world councils have all had meetings of all of that. Uh, and it, it's a local plan, don't let's confuse things with local plan with um, what is happening outside of the local plan. That, that doesn't need to be reflected here at this meeting because this is a calling on the two things which you, you, have to, you mentioned before. It is totally separate and away from what we're talking about here. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hudson. Thank you. Sorry, I was going to uh, ask you one question, but I'm going to ask you two now, though, George. First of all, you started your statement full political oversight. That's what you said. For what? You said that you were going to make sure that we have full political oversight. Okay. Did you elaborate that and give us more detail what you meant by that? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll use the example of. Microphone, please, Councillor Sorry, Sorry, Jim. What I, what I mean by that is, I think that there is a mechanism that needs to be used here. And, and I did make it in my speech, I really honestly believe it. I don't believe this is a political issue. And it shouldn't be a political issue. We're here for people to do And not to point score or, or whatever, it, it's, a, it's a major thing we're doing here. And I think, honestly, we've got to work together. My, my explanation of why I if you like, want delegated decision to move forward fast and, and efficiently, right, is that I would then ask people from the, the, the opposition's groups and our own group to, to join me and I would actually keep them fully informed and they can come back here at any time, any time at all as we're going through. But I'm given an option of that because we have on the planning committee uh, over the past uh, six months in particular, sort of 12 months, um, we had a problem with HMOs, but we're working as a three-party group to try and solve that problem. And that's what we should be doing here. Not arguing about politics. Nothing to do with politics. It's about giving the people the will an opportunity for a better life and a better way of living. That's what we're here for. So what you're promising is full involvement of all the councillors? I, I will give you an absolute assurance. I will give all councillors an absolute assurance. Okay. Well, the second question I'm going to ask you is, you go on about the government and the green belt and all the of course, because you're all willing to build on it. I asked this at full council. Have you had any documentation from the government telling you that you've got to build on green belt? Documentation? Documentation. No, we a figure. I'll, I'll give it back to you know, my figure. I think it's for it's for an exactly. That's what I meant. But uh, we'll, we'll see. Because I don't personally believe in the biggest statement, very quickly, Chair, very quickly. Will is, is a unique place. If you look at London and what happens in London, I was talking to somebody from London the other day about the same thing at, at the meeting in Liverpool. And when you, when you talk about it over there, it's totally different to what we're talking about here. So here we've got swathes of, 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 of land. This side of the M53 is basically built up. The other side is, is old and wants to stay that way. The bottom, the bottom line is, I think, in, 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 in a, an ever-changing scenario on rural in particular, we're all getting older. There's a lot of older people in, in rural now than there ever been. And there's a lot of people walking around in houses in five bedroom houses out on Melbus and Hoy Lake with one person who would like to move to something different and we're not giving them that opportunity at this moment. So therefore, when, when I talk to officers, I make the point, I make the point because I think it's absolutely relevant, there's a lot of young people who are going to university and never come back to work because they haven't got the jobs here to, 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 to follow on with. And you've got the other end, an ever-growing older group that are now the highest proportion on the road. And we've got, a, when we think about our local plan, that's what we've got to look at as well. We've got to understand what the needs are over the next 15, 20, 20 years. That's what we need to do. So don't ever forget that part, please.
Okay, Councillor Lewis. Thanks, thanks, Karen. Uh, thanks for allowing me to come back here for the second time based on some of the answers that the Cabinet member uh, has given. Having listened to you, uh, George, and you know, as always, you present a very plausible case when you're put on the spot, so to speak, in, in this sort of scenario. But if we look at the decision taken by Cabinet, when it talks about engagement and consultation on this particular issue, there's no mention in there about board councillors or having a cross-party group working together. So that is what has led to the concerns and the reason for the calling. Sorry. There's nothing in there to say that all 66 members will be consulted. There's nothing in there to say there will be any kind of cross-party group looking at this issue. So if I was being cynical, and you know, I'm not a cynical person, as you know, um, I, would say, I would say that this is a, a proposal that you've come up with now as a result of this problem. Because I don't have any reference well, to this prior okay. to if, if I can just finish a couple of other points, you may want to come back. Yeah. Because the other issue is, the, the report is quite clear that we have to delegate to officers. Now, there is a key decision that's been uh, highlighted recently concerning the golf resort in Hoyle. I'll give you this as an example. A key decision that uh, members have been alerted to who receive those updates. And it says on that key decision that the, the officer dealing with that key decision is Alan Evans. It doesn't say anything about the key decision other than it's a <coughs> resort decision coming in. I asked Alan Evans what was the nature of that key decision. He replied to me he knows nothing about it, he doesn't know why his name is put against us. Now that is a senior officer of this council who presumably you as a cabinet member are delegating powers to and he didn't know he was responsible for this key decision that's coming up or that he has to report on it. That brings me on to the Hoyle Lake Golf Resort as another example. Trying to get information out about the Hoyle Lake Golf Resort is like pulling teeth, I have to say. I don't know, you're clearly getting the information to cabinet member. We as opposition members or as backbench councils are being approached all the time by people who are concerned about this issue who are unable to get the most basic information about this particular project. So that doesn't fill us with confidence in terms of sharing information. And that leads on to the final example, Chair, the recent decision that we've had regarding the outsourcing of golf courses in the borough. Again, that, the, that decision was announced. I had to request the background information for that. One of the reports related to that decision, the soft market testing of golf courses, I've been told is exempt and can't be given to the public. The reports themselves relate to capital works requiring Brackenwood, Arrow Park and the Warrens Golf Course. Again, members have not been consulted about that. We've only received that information because we've asked for it after the decision has been taken. So, notwithstanding your willingness to come to this committee today and to answer questions and to make promises to us, I'm afraid the examples recently suggest that the council is going in the opposite direction. And then, coupled with all that, we're looking to delegate more of these decisions to uh, senior directors, one of whom I've never met in my life before he left the building. That's how engaged he was with, with councillors. And then consultants, who we know are in favour of developments, who are, have a track record of working with developers, and yet you are saying that we should, we should delegate more powers to people who, to again, some people who are cynical, who say they have a vested interest in those developments. So forgive me, councillor, if I'm cynical, but I remain yet to be persuaded that this decision taken by Cabinet is in the best interest of all 66 of us, and I certainly don't think it's in the best interest of the borough. I'm sorry. Before you answer those questions, councillor Davis, can I just ask, when members are asking questions of witnesses, they actually ask questions and not make statements. And then those questions be based on the two points Councillor Blakely and his colleagues signed up to within the call in, please. So questions based on the call in rather than make statements, spurious statements, which bear little if any relevance to what we're here to discuss. Thank you very much. Councillor Davis, you can ask, answer those questions if you choose well, to. I'll, I'll, I'll just answer one, one part of the question. Um, and I think um, it was mentioned, the only thing mentioned again, that I was to work in It was me, and when you look at the opportunity to speak to your two officers later on, both the Tor and um, David, they were both. You think you, you're here, it was me that asked them, could we have a waiting room? And it's been on the, the table, or trying to get on the table for a long time. So in some ways, I'm glad that I've come here today yeah. to be able to do this. And, and then I'll ask Okay, thanks Councillor Davis. I have four more questions. Brian Kenny, 
name's Tony Smith. There's Gray. So we can have those questions. I'm sorry, Christina must grab the fourth question. We can have those questions. Councillor Kenny. Thank you, Chair. My question to the Cabinet Minister is very similar to the one I posed to Councillor Bradley earlier. Because there seems to be a bit of a theme during the discussion that somehow uh, elected members are being kept out of the loop and also that in some cases officers are making decisions which they shouldn't be making. So my, my question is quite specific, Chair, to the Cabinet Member. Is can you confirm that the decisions in relation to the Widow Local Plan will be made solely by elected members? I can confirm that. I keep saying it, but no one seems to want to listen about um, when, the, when these decisions actually are made, and, and they are made it, at this present moment in time, it's because we've got to do it that way. So you've got to do a, t a test for these pieces of land. That's the part we've done. We've done that. That's gone out. The consultation has come back in. Now we're at the point where we're now starting to analyse that consultation. And that's where we're up to. My point to you and to the, every member here tonight is, when we get that information coming back through the way, I will ensure that you all get that message. Everyone, yeah. thank you. Councillor Tony Smith. Okay, thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, first of all, um, it, it, it does seem to me that one of the areas we seem to have been really lacking in, it, it has taken us this uh, number of years, 14 years, to sort of catch up. I notice in resource implications, you're saying that um, you have advertised five new posts, um, I think you've got a building of planning, uh, a principal planning officer in that, um, and you quite out. I'm just asking you in general, are new posts being created um, to sort of speed up this process? And secondly, um, I'm glad to hear, and I have to concur with uh, Councillor Ian Lewis, that you know, um, it's good to hear that all members will have oversight of this. I mean, that is crucial. And I don't think that's been made clear in the past. Um, also, I do feel that, um, you know, it would make sense to have a cross-party sort of looking at the technical studies. Because I always sort of, um, a little bit suspicious when technical studies are done, who exactly is doing that. So it's very important that all members, whether it's this group to the committee or whichever group is that, I just think you can't have an ad hoc kind of approach to this. You've got to have definite sort of uh, committee or, or groups to look at. I mean, I know you're, you're being positive today and saying this, we will do this. I, I, we need to see it. That's what I'm saying. So could you answer those yeah. questions? Thanks. Yes, um, first of all, Tony, yeah, thanks, thanks for that question. Because it, 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 it comes back to the same argument again, or the same debate. Uh, I, th I think you're absolutely right. It's got to be open, it's got to be transparent. Everybody's got to be able to have an input into this. Because I, you know, you know, Tommy, I've met with the board councillors, I've met with all sorts of people on this uh, uh, and, and tried. But at this present moment in time, I couldn't give you a definitive answer. I couldn't. At this moment in time, once that cons consultation is finished and it comes back, that's when we can have the discussion. That's when it becomes a political decision rather than an officer's recommendation coming through at the present moment in time. It will become a political decision. And all of us will make a decision. All of us. And I, I can't say that enough, and I hope it's going in. I mean, can, can I just come back and ask very quickly, Chair? I mean, I know um, Councillor Jones at the very beginning asked, is there a timeline for this? Are we